Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. I am your host and your only host this week, Dana Evans. And I am so excited to do a solo episode. We've had the most amazing, magical time doing the Solular Connection series with Kimmy Morton. If you have not listened to those I cannot recommend them enough. We've gotten so many positive comments about people really loving the message of those episodes, talking about rest, talking about work and rest and our relationship to the two, talking about relationships and boundaries and rest within relationships, our intuition, our inner guidance, and oh, Thank you, Kimmy, for being here, and we will definitely bring her back for more inspired cellular connection conversations because I just feel like it's something that is important to share, and I'm just so grateful that we got to do that series. Today, though, is I am circling all the way back, as you may remember, before the cellular connection series was the sloth experiment. And I really went in and shared with you all what was going on, the behind the scenes of this deep period for me of slowing down, going inward, tuning into my inner voice, releasing old trapped emotions focusing and witnessing just programming that I wasn't even sure was mine or where it came from and coming back home to self. That was really the experiment. So this week on the podcast, I'm going to talk all about how that unfolded, where I am now with that process and that experience and what came through of it and even more exciting what came out of that especially as it relates to the business so that is what we're talking about on the home front it is the first week of february Welcome to a new month. January always feels like a super long month to me. (laughs) I don't know if you experienced that, but January, it's always like, oh my God, it just keeps going. So I'm always very excited to enter February. February is also my birthday month. So I love that as well. And I've just been enjoying feeling energetic, enjoying joy. I've been really present in the moment. And honestly, I've been going to bed every night just filled with gratitude and appreciation for the little things in my day-to-day life. Like nothing big, but it's just like, oh, I love the food that I had. I love the conversation I had. I love the walk I went on. I love the moon. I love my sheets. I love that my cat is snuggled up with me. Just all these little mini moments, I'm spending a lot of time in gratitude and appreciation for. And in particular, I do that right before bed. So that's what I've been up to. And I'm really excited for you to hear the debrief from the Great Sloth Experiment of 2020. So without further ado, here's this week's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome to your first solo episode with me for a while. And it is so good to be back. And I'm so excited to be sitting here talking about the debrief of the sloth experiment. What is the sloth experiment? Well, if you listened to any (laughs) of the previous episodes before January, I talked all about 
this sloth experiment that I embarked on. And it actually started, if you didn't listen, with episode number 60 called Things I'm Afraid to Tell You. And that was really when I shared what I've been up to and what I was looking for and what inspired me to slow down, go inward, and almost put an entire halt to my business as I knew it and my life. Truthfully, what came of those four months, the last four months of 2020 was really profound. And the interesting thing is I've felt better (laughs) since about January 4th. And since then I have had on my list, oh, on the list, do the sloth experiment debrief. But for some reason, I've been dragging my feet. And there are quite a few reasons why I haven't sat down to record this episode, but I'm pretty sure one of them is that my mind, the mind in me, has not wanted to sit down and reflect and recognize all the transformation, all of the letting go that occurred over that time, because the mind softened over that time period. The mind lost its grip on a lot of aspects of life that it wanted to control. And by sitting down and talking about it and sharing the debrief, the mind is going to be faced with what's really happened. Now, I did get a taste of this at the beginning of January. I had an inner voice session with my inner voice coach, Nicole Perkins. And it was literally like three days after I started feeling better and I shared everything with her. And then literally that evening and for the next couple of days, I was in like panic, like, oh my God, this isn't real. This can't be real. I don't believe this happened. I can't feel this good. What's going on? Like total mind freak out. So that was really shocking to my system. And I think think I was just dragging my feet a little bit on that. So let's just like rewind for a minute. And the sloth experiment started around September. And this is a term, I didn't make this up. My inner voice made this up. And it started where I just was feeling kind of worn down. I was feeling sick of the results I was getting in my business. I was feeling tired of the same thought patterns, right? The same frustrations, the same procrastinations, the same fight in my own body. And I was also feeling like annoyed with things and people in my life. And I felt like I was being demanded of constantly. And I remember saying to my coach, Lauren Armstrong, so I started working with her in September And then in October, I started working with Nicole Perkins for inner voice work. So what I set up for myself was every week, I either had a coaching session with Lauren, which also included a lot of emotional release, or I had an inner voice session with Nicole. And I set that up for myself intentionally because I wanted to double down. Because in September, I was like, I need to change something. Like I need to shake things up. I just know that this isn't all of me and there's more to experience, but I'm blocked and I am blocking myself. I am the block. And in order to get through that block, I need support and guidance from not only traditional coaching, but as you know, I'm so passionate about the inner voice. And so I wanted to hear the perspective of my inner voice. So that's kind of what spurred that. But I remember having a conversation with Lauren and I said, I just wish... I could turn my phone off for two weeks and everyone would leave me alone and I could just hide. (laughs) And what I now see is that the two in my profile, the hermit was really speaking because I was being called to pull away, to go inward, to slow down, to stop the cycling of thoughts and to-do lists and tasks and judgments and doubts and to just come back home to me, to myself. 
And Lauren said, well, what would it take for you to do that? I was like, oh God, I don't know. So all of that started with that one little conversation. And that turned into me taking a vacation. I was gone in September. I went to the beach for 12 days. I was gone. And then I came home and I was like, it's not enough. Like that wasn't enough. That was a pretty good vacation. I turned off, but it wasn't enough. And I'm like, well, God, how ridiculous am I that I can be away for 12 days and feel like it's not enough? And then I took another trip and I was gone for another 12 days. And this time I was working, but I was away and I came home and I'm like, I still need more. And I came to realize that it wasn't that I needed to get away. (laughs) And those trips were really wonderful and powerful, but I needed to turn off a lot of the external noise that was coming through so I could turn up my inner voice. And that was really what spurred all of this. So then I started slowing down and just checking like, what if I suspended disbelief here for three months? And Lauren proposed this to me. She's like, look, we're used to like 90 day revenue goals, but what would it look like if you had a 90 day rest goal? And I was like, oh my God, yes, I want this. And that is the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. (laughs) like terrifying. And yet it aligned with everything I was seeking, right? Everything that I was being nudged toward. I had such an intense relationship with working and doing and proving. And also learning about myself as a projector, knowing like my role isn't to do more. My role is to guide and to have space and to let things be easy and to attract those who are most drawn to my energy so that I can work with them and see them, right? And help them see themselves and guide them. And still, I just felt this panicky feeling about really stepping away from everything and playing with rest. But in this desire to just radically transform my life and change my experiences, I said, okay, let's do it. Like I am going to suspend disbelief. I'm going to stop fighting and comparing and trying to earn money, right? Trying to prove my value and just drop back into self. And through that, as I shared on the podcast, I had so much to clear. And it's interesting because I've done so much inner work. (laughs) I've done a lot of clearing and experiencing emotions and looking at stories and being coached and coaching myself. And yet I realized that so much of what I was experiencing is just an undercurrent And my day-to-day life, like even being excited for the next thing, like excited for the next trip, excited to meet a friend for a drink, excited for this, excited for that, was almost a mask for the undercurrent that was driving a lot of things. And of course, this was, you know, in the winter of 2020, so COVID times, fall and winter, I didn't really have anything else going on. And then I pulled out the rug from under myself of everything else that I had going on. So all the things that I identified as, right, a hard worker (laughs) and all of those aspects of myself, I pulled out from under me. So all of a sudden I didn't have anything to look forward to. I didn't have any trips. I didn't have any social obligations. I was like, really slowed down in work. I did only the bare minimum. I didn't have any projects planned at all in December or January or November or October. (laughs) I had no projects planned. I just did what needed to be done, which was pretty minimal in my business. And I just let go. And it was in the letting go that really, really shook me because it was all I knew. It's all I've known for 32 years. (laughs) 
of holding on and just even in my not overworking phase, right, which is probably the last year, I still had all these undercurrents of working to prove, right? And working to prove to John that I could make this work and having these money stories and like panic about like, oh my gosh, what if I don't bring in money? And what if this and what if that? And all of these things, what happened was when I pumped the brakes, I stopped, but the emotions and thoughts didn't, but they didn't have anywhere to go because I didn't have anywhere to direct my energy. There was no outward focus. So all of a sudden I'm sitting with myself and all of the feelings and all of the thoughts and all of the stories, they came flooding up. It's like, I use this analogy all the time. It's like all this time I was holding the beach ball underneath the water. And when I stopped pushing down, everything bubbled up. And so I was faced with these really intense emotions. I was faced with a flood of emotions that I'd felt, I'm like, God, I thought I dealt with, like, I thought I'd gone there. I thought I had dealt with this stuff, but I had only dealt at the surface level. I'd only dealt with what I could process in the midst of being busy with the rest of my life. But now the rest of my life was, for all lack of a better term, it was on hold so I could deal with this stuff. And everything came up. And I actually did write down some of the phases that I went through because I think it's really powerful to see. But I started in this kind of curious phase, which was like, okay, something's missing. I'm not sure what, right? I described that. Like, I just want to feel free from the constant pressure and doubts that the mind is bringing up. I'm feeling stuck. And I I know that at this point, the way I have to address this is different than anything I've ever done. And feeling at that time was like, oh my God, I was very fearful. I was very attached. I was doubtful, right? My whole thing was I'm going to suspend disbelief. Like that was my mantra to get me through. I'm like, this is just an experiment. I'm not changing my life. I'm just seeing what what happens if I do something radically different. I was very anxious and concerned. I was very concerned about what other people would think about me. And it was stressful. And then kind of as I went on, the second phase was like more connection. And I was like, oh, I'm starting to like see that there's something else going on, right? The mind was starting to see. I was also starting to be like, whoa, like what life have I been living? Like seriously, this was a massive process that I went through. Like what have I been living through? Not everything is as it seems. Then I really started like questioning like what? Why do I do these things? Why do I think these things? Like what caused me to choose this path, this action? And from there though, I was starting to sense like possibility. I was starting to notice my inner voice showing up more often. Also tons of old emotions. That's when they started to surface. I actually experienced my emotions in waves. So it was like for an entire week, I felt anxious. For an entire week, I felt angry. For an entire week, I felt depressed. For an entire week, I felt fearful. And it was like singular emotions that had been, again, undercurrents in my life, all of a sudden, all at once flooded up. Like, oh my God, I couldn't get through the day without just, it was like my body was buzzing with anxiousness and my nerves. I even remember feeling like just sensitivity, my whole nervous system. Like I couldn't take a lot of stimulus. I couldn't watch TV. My teeth were feeling sensitive. I kid you not, my teeth are no longer sensitive, but during the last three months, my teeth were even sensitive. So my whole nervous system was like, unnerved. (laughs) I was definitely going through waves of emotions, like intense feelings of those. And then I would clear them. So it was like, I would feel the intensity of that emotion for around a week. And then it was like, by allowing myself to be in the presence of that and doing the inner voice work and doing work with Lauren of like Reiki and 
like NLP subconscious reprogramming, I was clearing those emotions. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I got to this place where I was like, oh my God, I don't know anything. (laughs) Help. What have I done? (laughs) Will I ever find myself again? And that was, I remember being in inner voice sessions at this period where my inner voice was like describing my mind. And it was like I had jumped off of a cliff because I'm like, I'm done with this side of the cliff and I want to jump across. But midway through the jump, I started falling. And I described this period and this will sound horrible, but I really was like, I feel like I'm in purgatory because I know I can't go back and I jumped, right? And I can't go back. Like, I don't want to go back, but I am too afraid to go forward anymore. So I was just stuck in the air. It was like, my mind was like grasping for anything to hold on to, like any knowns that it could hold on to. And it was like scratching at the air to hold on, but there was nothing to hold on to. It was like, you made the jump. The only way now is to keep going. And my mind was terrified. And a thing that came up a lot, which I'll address later is like, will I ever feel like myself again? Because at this point I had no energy. I was very, just so inward. It's not like I even really wanted energy. It wasn't even like an option. I just was very inward, slowed down. It was very interesting, but this idea of like, will I ever feel like myself again was interesting because I'm like, well, the reason I went on this path is because I was so frustrated with myself and how I was experiencing life and I wanted something different. So interesting how the mind wants to go back to the known, even if it's an unwanted known. And during that time though, of that, like, what have I done? (laughs) I felt really exposed. I like, oh my gosh, it was interesting. I also felt this like inability to accept any BS in the world. I was like, nope, like I'm not dealing with this. Like it was like my BS filter got really, really sharp and attuned. I was definitely growing beyond my comfort zone, right? So it was like I stepped outside the comfort zone and that's very uncomfortable. And I would get these like really intense waves of emotion. So like I remember at one point I I was in the shower and I like had this realization because a lot of clarity was coming through at that point, right? I think I'm describing it like maybe it sounds like this horrible experience, but it was intense, but it wasn't horrible. And one thing that happened in that phase was so much clarity, like just like sparks of clarity. And I remember being in the shower and realizing something, right? And this happened to be specifically something I needed to let go of in my life and in my business. And I step out of the shower and grab my towel and I just collapsed onto the floor crying. (laughs) Just this intense release of resistance because I'd been holding on somewhere beneath the surface that knowing had been sitting there and all of a sudden it bubbled up. It was like, Hey, this is it. And then the crying was like knowing that that's the truth. And I needed to let that part go. And whoa, a lot of those, like just intense bursts of emotion would just come up and then like clear. And I just let that happen, right? I knew that these are emotional beanbags, right? These are old trapped emotions and thoughts that need to be released. So then we're getting better, okay? (laughs) This is when you have to be extra compassionate for yourself because I definitely had a ton of of clearing to do. And I remember my inner voice sessions, it was just like, I was just crying in my inner voice sessions and shaking. And thank God for Nicole for holding that space for me because I felt those transformations. Like after each session, I was like, oh, that was so needed. And we just don't create space for ourselves at that capacity. We do not create space for ourselves in our day-to-day life, especially when we're going through intense times, to just keep letting it out. Keep the floodgates open so you can move that energy out. We have to move out the old if we want to make space for the new. And Lauren too, it was like, I would just get on the call with Lauren and just cry. 
immediately. (laughs) And I'm just so grateful for the space that those women held for me because this is one that, man, I have so many tools. I have so many tools, but this was definitely something that I did not want to embark on alone. And I really needed that support along with the support of friends and family and my husband and all my coach friends that I could just talk to. So the next phase was, so I just described to you the correct open and raw phase. And the next phase was like surrender. And it was kind of like, a oh my God, like I was kind of just tired. And I remember specifically in one of my inner voice sessions, it was like, wow, it was one of the most profound experiences. Guys, you do not need drugs to have psychedelic experiences. I'm just going to say that. I stand by that. This is all within you. And I was in the session. I had like big waves of crying, of fighting. The mind was just fighting so bad. You know, the poor mind, it just wanted to hold on. It was gripping. And it was just this little thing Nicole asked, like, well, is the experiment over? And it was like, no, like my inner voice was like, no. And my mind was like, no, please. And I cried. And then I got so deep. And I remember lying there after the intensity, after the intense release of emotions. And I was lying there and I literally felt my body like transcend physical form. And I became like little silver droplets and I was just floating. And that was the most profound experience. Oof, I'm getting tears bringing this up of stillness that I'd ever experienced at that point. And it was like physical form dissolved and I was essence. I was presence. I was my being. And it was transformational. It really was because I'd never experienced that level of fluidity, right? Softness in my body. And then, (laughs) so that's still the surrender phase. And, you know, I started being like, God, well, what else is possible? Like, now that I've come this far, like what else is possible? Like what is needed of me right now? So having bigger questions about myself and my place in this world, what I was feeling so much compassion for the world, (laughs) for myself. Literally, I was just like, I was so watery at this point and I had so much softness and compassion in my life. And it was really powerful. I had so much compassion. (laughs) I felt super in tune with the cosmic energy. Like I felt everything and everyone's energy, it seemed like. And I was super in tune with my own energy and how things just like how things affected me, right? Oh, it was just such a powerful place to be. I felt pretty inspired, right? I felt more clarity. I had tons of ideas flooding in. Like, oh my gosh. I remember texting someone and I was like, I'm so overwhelmed with ideas and excitement about my business and my life that I cannot even focus (laughs) because like all of these ideas were coming through. Definitely was in a heightened state of awareness. There was a lot of stillness in my mind. You know, that part, this was after that really intense experience where I became like liquid and I wasn't thinking as much. Like those thought patterns, those old thought patterns weren't rotating and I was just more present and aware and still. And I was able to really start to witness my emotions as they were happening, as they bubbled up and release them instead of holding on to them. And it wasn't as intense of a release. But, you know, (laughs) this was kind of like I'd shed a layer of skin that was ready to be released. Foods were affecting me differently. Oh my gosh, like caffeine was making me so dizzy. I couldn't have caffeine. Alcohol was like, 
oh, was not at all sitting well. Like I was just sensitive to foods and substances, just listening to his songs and watching shows, like all of my feelings were so present and like ready to be felt that I could feel everything. You're so plugged in. So at that time I needed so much alone time. I needed so much space. I just needed to be. (laughs) I was also a lot less reactive, which was really powerful. I remember though, and I recorded one of these as a video for the Sloth Experiment IGTV series. And I remember just like going out in the world one day and like talk to people. And I just like, I felt them so deeply. And I remember getting in the car and just crying because I felt so connected to other people. And that was really awesome. So then (laughs) the next phase I'm calling renewal. (laughs) And Here's the thing. Up until that point, I basically came to terms with the fact that, well, I don't know if I will ever feel good again. Good being the good that I knew. And I think that's really important to remember is that what I knew is all I knew. And I always had identified as like a really pretty happy person, but Honestly, like the year leading up to this experiment, I would say I wasn't that happy person. And it's not that I was unhappy. I just, I had lost a lot of the spark and energy that I saw as myself. Now, if you've seen me on Instagram or like talked to me, that may not be clear to you because I am generally relatively upbeat and optimistic. But internally, I just sensed something was just, I'd lost that part of myself. And so then I went deep into this intense period and I was like, maybe I never was a perky person. Like maybe that was all an act. (laughs) Like maybe that's not who I am. And I was pretty much in that surrender phase, kind of like, well, I'm surrendering to whoever I am, whoever needs to become of me to step forth. And I kind of took off these expectations and demands of like who I'm going to be, what my personality is, and when this is going to happen. And at this point, beautifully in the surrender phases, the mind had stopped trying to make it be over. Because up until then, every week, my mind's like, "Mm, the the experiment's probably over. The experiment's probably over. I'm like, no mind. We gave it three months. (laughs) So it's not over yet. But the mind was very attached to the timeline. But once I got into this surrender phase, I was like, well, there's no going back and I can only go forward. So I'm just going to be. And then lo and behold, I got into the next phase, which is renewal. (laughs) Renewal. And... I literally was like, I'm emerging as a different human being. (laughs) And a question that I was asking myself during that time was, is this serving me and the greater purpose that I'm here for? Like that was a guiding and is now a guiding question in the things that I'm doing. Like, what is this serving? What is this serving? And feeling a sense of emergence, more like myself. And again, I want to be clear, more like my true self. Definitely was having energy come back, but it just felt different. And I like to say that this process is like I went from wearing like cloudy, dirty, dusty glasses to putting on like crystal clear glitter glasses. (laughs) And everything, including myself, was experienced and seen through those glasses. Now, I definitely had like a mourning of my past self, right? If you've ever had an experience where, I don't know, if you've given something up, maybe it's caffeine or alcohol or like, I remember my mom and I used to go to the movies when I was younger and we'd eat like the fake popcorn and Coca-Cola. And I remember when like I was on my journey of just like cleaning up all of my food I remember thinking, gosh, I wish I could go to the movie and eat popcorn and Coke 
and have the experience be as enjoyable as it used to be. Because I could still go to the movie and I could still eat popcorn and Coke, but I would feel like crap afterward. And it's like that nostalgia, like I missed when that was enjoyable, even though it's not something that serves me. And that's definitely what I was feeling with this renewal phase of like, there is a mourning of my past self, like a mourning of what I knew and letting go of that truly. And also a sense of like effortless flow, so much more trust, so much more faith. And this, I do not know how to describe it until you experience it, but the mind stopped fighting. It was like, F you, fine, we give up. And these big, big stories that used to control large portions of my day thinking about them, like money, like doing, right, business stuff. For me, that's usually my main storyline. Is That's like my mind's chew toy is all about business and wealth and abundance and work and worth. And it just went away. I just, I went from being so afraid to having so much clarity and trust and knowing in my own success, in the inevitability of my own success and how powerful that is going to be for me to serve other people. Like it is mind blowing that that storyline just disappeared. The fear. I was like, no, I know what I have to offer. I know the potency of it. And I'm so excited to work with the people who are aligned for it. And I don't know if you watch Sex in the City, <laughs> but Charlotte was, she went through the process to, as she says, become a Jew. And she was at the very end of her process and in, she had to like get baptized. I know that's not the right word, but she goes to the temple and there's this big pool and she's naked and she starts on the one side as an Episcopalian. And then she walks down the steps and then she walks into the pool. She dunks under. And then she emerges as a Jew. And that to me is like the essence of this process of you're nervous, you're uncomfortable, you don't know, you feel vulnerable and exposed. And then you step in, oh, it's a little cold, it's a little uncomfortable. And then you go under and then it takes as long as it takes while you're under there. But inevitably you come out and you emerge a new version of yourself. And that is what I experienced. You know, you're sourcing your energy from your heart. It's like coming up from air, right? It's like, oh, you can breathe. And it's your inner spring has arrived. And I had, it was literally like I had given up all hope, not hope, but I had given up all like stress about when I was going to quote feel better. And then one day I literally woke up and I was like, oh my God, I feel amazing. And I have it, I have it pulled up right now because, you know, I send these voice memos to my magical morning partner, Candice. I've talked about this magical morning practice where we send a little memo each day to each other. And I look at January 4th, I titled the memo, New Year Renewed Energy. That was the day, January 4th, that all of a sudden it was like, poof. It's like nothing ever happened (laughs) except so much happened. And I felt refreshed. I felt inspired. I felt energized. And I was so scared because what do we do? We get comfortable in the things that we know, even if they're uncomfortable experiences. And I was like, there's no way this is going to last. Like, this is a fluke. This is an accident. I had an inner voice session a couple days later, which I started this conversation about. And my inner voice was like, enjoy it. We're back. It's over for now. You may go back in, but each time you deep dive, it gave me this analogy of a diver. Each time you go back in, the dive gets a little easier. It gets a little more familiar, right? You get to work on different things. And my inner voice also gave me this beautiful analogy of like, basically I was at the space where I was blooming again as like a leaf on the tree and I was unfurrowing. But at some point, fall will come again and the leaf will come back down 
It will float its way to the ground. It will merge with the dirt in the earth. It will compost and become the nutrients for the roots where it will sit. And it will be absorbed with water and absorbed by the roots of the trees. And then come right back up through the trunk, through the branches and emerge again. And it's a continual process of renewal if we choose to allow it. And not to be afraid of going back in. It's part of the cycle of life. It's part of, for a woman, it's part of her monthly cycle, right? It's part of our yearly seasonal cycle. There's so many cycles that we flow through. And why not allow this emergence and renewal cycle to happen on an emotional identity level scale? That's why I call it coming back home, right? As a journey back to myself. Because I was always here, but my mind was pulling me everywhere else. And I was like, cut everything off and come back home to self. And I, of course, did this in an extreme way. I, I had the ability to do that. And so now I'm a month later after that first renewal and my mind keeps trying to be like, well, you only feel this way because of this. You only feel this way because of this. But I can tell you that I have had sustained, inspired energy for a month now. And it's amazing. I had so much energy the other day that I was like the cat, like doing sprints around the house. I was like running up and down the stairs and like jumping on my trampoline and like doing hops because I just had energy to burn. And that is not something I'd experienced in months. And it felt so powerful and it's so powerful. And my inner voice kept saying this throughout my entire process was just trust that you'll see the light again. Just trust that things will glitter again, but they will be more shiny, more clear, more delightful than you've ever experienced before. And I can attest to that. I can attest to the fact that I have so much more stillness. I have so much more trust. I have so much more knowing in the moment of how my life is unfolding. And I think about this all the time is like, well, how do you know it will unfold that way? Well, I don't know from the mind, right? None of us do. We're not, I can't predict the future, but I would so much rather be at peace and feel joyful and contented and easeful in the moment then feel what I was feeling before of worried and stressed and unworthy and scared and nervous and not trusting. Because both of those are experiences in the moment. And the actions that you take come from that energy. So now with this spaciousness that I have in my energy field, the actions I take are so much more effective. They're so much more profound because they're not driven by fear or doubt or lack of worthiness. They're driven by inspiration, by joy, by contentment, by peace, by ease, and by this knowing that I am taken care of. And of course, with that knowing, with that trust, with these stories, these new stories that I believe and tell myself, I'm seeing evidence that supports that. Of course I am. That's how it works. And it's changed my life. My life is changed. And the crazy thing is, is this is to me just like my first iteration. And I just am so inspired and excited and in awe of the power that we have within us. Each of you has within you. And because of that, I created what was birthed. There was so much that was birthed during this time period, which is really, to me, astounding. I wrote this post and I called it What's Up and What's New. You'll actually get the email about that. But I just took some time to like write, like, here's what's coming in 2021 with a line full. And I was like, oh my God, when did all these things happen? Because I thought I spent the last three months doing nothing. But I have a new vlog. I had the new podcast series. I have a new one to one program. I'm turning the membership into a course. I have 
some fun new weekly series on Instagram. I've got new people helping me out. Like I just can't even believe all the different things that have conspired (laughs) or been inspired through this amazing nothingness, right? It all was birthed. I keep using the term birth because it came through. It was this beautiful process versus the mind being like, we must do this, right? It unfolded on its own. And now I have created the insight coaching experience. Insight. Because you're going inward and you're getting to see clearly through your own eyes, the eyes of your inner voice, not through the eyes of expectation or judgment. And it's a three-month deep dive into self, a space to unlearn, to release old programming, to free trapped emotions, and tap into the wisdom of your inner voice or your higher self. And this program, as I said, came from, was birthed from my own experience over the last few months of 2020. And through my own accounts and through my own collating of everything that went through, I guess, it's really the specific processes that I use to facilitate my own massive inner and outer transformation. And here's the thing. This is the most effective and rewarding process that I have found to connect to your inner voice or your higher self so that you can follow your inner guidance, right? Trust that it's aligned to your best and highest good and actually follow it and live a life that is beyond anything that you could have ever hoped for or expected from the mind because you've broken out of the expectations. You've broken free from the traps and the limited beliefs that your mind has created and you've allowed yourself to expand beyond what you thought was possible. And this shows up in the most simplest ways. Like the joy that I feel in the small moments of everyday life, to me, that is worth the experience alone because I pulled myself out of my own suffering right? I had trapped myself in this mind story of suffering and now I'm free from it. Just my day-to-day life is so much more magical and glittery and joyful and easeful and peaceful because the mind is not driving the car. It's not trying to crash the car every 10 seconds. But also it's the bigger transformation of taking the big steps that you didn't know you wanted or needed in your life, you know, making drastic changes and being open to listening to that guidance within you and following that. The program, it's three months and it is designed based on my own experience where I am your coach and your inner voice facilitator. I, of course, am both of those in my day-to-day business and I decided to bring them together to merge the two. So it's three months of weekly coaching and we switch between mind-based and subconscious reprogramming coaching to help really like keep the mind accountable and then the inner voice coaching where I guide and facilitate your inner voice and we answer any questions that you have and we release deep emotions and we do energy work and energy clearing so that the roadblocks become more clear so that the mind knows what steps it can take. And it's a really powerful process that we get to work through over the course of three months so that you can have your own dip in the pool, right? Your own reclamation of self, your own emergence, your own renewal process that you can shift from wearing the cloudy, foggy, dirty, old out of style glasses and put on the glittery, sparkly, shiny 2020 vision glasses. And I am inviting 11 perfect, magical people to join me in this program. And if it is something that sounds exciting and inspiring to you, please let me know. This is such a intimate experience for each person. It's one-to-one, but I want to work with 
My inner voice told me 11. I did not choose that from the mind. My mind had a much smaller number, but my inner voice said 11 over a three-month period. And so if that feels like, if you feel a little spark within when you heard that, like, oh my God, that's probably your inner voice saying, please, <laughs> let's let's learn more. Like we want this, we want this for you, for your own transformation. And if that's the case, send me an email to dana at alignful.com, D-A-N-A at A-L-I-G-N-F-U-L.com. Or if it's easier, just send me a direct message on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans. I would love to hear from you. I've already almost seen, I can feel even as I'm speaking, those who are ready and they're just ready for this transformation. It's not for everybody. You know, not everyone wants to go that deep and get to know themselves that fully and completely. Not everyone is ready to take the plunge. (laughs) Not everyone is ready to step beyond the discomforts of their comfortable life and step into the unknown that will birth the most magical feelings and experiences that they could ever imagine. It is not for everyone. And so that's why I'm keeping the number small and trusting that those who it is for, you know who I'm talking to. Your inner voice is telling you right now as we speak, you are getting either the chills or the little leap in the heart or the drop in the stomach or the warmth in your body or a little jolt of energy in your heart or a sparkle in your eye. That's who I'm talking to. And I'm not even talking to your mind. I am speaking directly to your inner voice and inviting you to please reach out to me. Email me, dana at alignful.com or Instagram message me at dana underscore Evans. And I, I have never been so excited for anything in my business. I have never felt so freaking clear on the magical transformations that you're going to experience in this program. And I have never, by the way, done this much one-to-one work. I usually do group work. And so you get to spend three months with me as your guide, taking you on this journey that I too have gone on. And we really design your own journey for this insight program. It will will not look like mine. It will be guided by your inner voice and we'll just clear all of the junk that's in the way so that you have the most clear, most aligned, most glittering magical path to the next version of you so you can step into that space with trust and knowingness and so much love and compassion for your path so i cannot wait i have never been so excited like i can't believe that this came out of like i just had this flashback to me recording the things i'm afraid to tell you podcast to me now And I never could have expected or imagined this to unfold either. Like, I didn't know this is what was going to happen at the end of the experiment. I didn't know I would feel this good. I didn't know I would have such a knowing and powerful way to take you on this journey as well. And I didn't know I'd be doing all this one-to-one work, but through the guidance of my inner voice, like this is what I'm here for this year. So reach out to me and we can schedule a call if this feels aligned. And then you too will have the most profound magical journey of your life. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. My heart is bursting with joy and love for each and every one of you. And I can't wait to see what's next for you. If you think this will resonate with anyone in your life, whether it's the insight coaching experience or just this episode, please share or tag me on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans. And I can't wait to see you on the inside and experiencing your own insights. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans, or find me on my website at alignful.com.